Now I'm oh, hot. Oh, I noticed that could have been a disaster. I love how I start the stream right when I realize. No, my sister-in-law shouldn't be telling me to strip. <laughs> we'll put a different shirt on then, at least. Okay, well, I'm, we're live. Hi, I'm SCB, um, <laughs> MessyB20. We play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, or more specifically, Pathfinder 2nd Edition on this channel. Um, we are doing our final, I know I've been saying this for like weeks now, but we're doing our final session for Waterdeep Dragon Heist this Saturday, and then I'll be able to send my goodie bags that I'm going to make. Oh, I need to do that. Oh. Okay, Google, <laughs> remind me to order the things for the go goodie bags tonight. I'll remind you at 9 p.m. Okay, that's a perfect time. Thank you. Okay, and then this Sunday we're doing our Strength of Thousands campaign, uh, which is really fun. Um, definitely check that out. That was a longer ongoing campaign. And these three in this row over here are actually all in it as character <laughs> so oh my god wait a minute okay 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 i for a second i thought i had to buy like the next chapter anyway besides me being just like a disaster um we the light. we are gonna do the question of the day and who made up the question of the day it was me. Do you want to ask it? Was it? Me. Yeah, don't, yeah. Sound, don't sound too excited. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, the question that I came up with, with is if you were a bug, what bug would you be? And I guess why? Maybe? Do you want to give why? I guess I'll go first too. Yeah. <laughs> Since I'm already talking. Uh, I am thick curvy and i play mika yanzer she is a like lower kind of nobility court lady in waiting type lady she is a gossip loves good juicy you know rumors and things like that very typical lady in waiting of the court but uh on her off time she is um kind of living a double life as like a mercenary type person so she has kind of this edge to her still figuring it out uh still trying to make it work still balancing it like trying to go on two dates on one night like in a sitcom <laughs> i love that i'll go next i guess obviously in messy b20 um wait did you did you say your bug oh <laughs> It's your question. It's your question. Right. <laughs> um, I don't even have an answer. Um, oh, no. I would be um probably I wouldn't be really I'd be a moth, like a really fuzzy moth cuz I like the nighttime but like still with light so I'm attracted to light, but at night, so I'd be a moth. That was gonna be my answer. Well, you can also be a moth. We, we can, can be, be moths, moths together. together. We can both get trapped <laughs> in a light bulb together. I love it for us. <laughs> um, yeah, I would be a moth. Um, and because uh, I'm always looking for the light, despite the fact that I'm in darkness. Um, and uh, I play. Uh, Mildred Dusuckle, Mildred Dusuckle, and um, she is an ancient uh, sprite who has been outcasted by the sprite society, um, despite the fact that her patron, um, uh, Wilbur Wilfred, I should say, um, is still very popular amongst the greater face society. Um, and she is a witch and um, a mosquito witch, and she has nature powers, and that's that. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm Victory Bell. I play Ohana, a Shuni uh, emissary, uh, or an emissary of the Shuni. 
um, oracle. Um, Shuni tends to be a little bit of like a peaceful um, kind of race, but they're also kind of one of the more um, pompous of the animal kin. So uh, I tend to be pretty arrogant and and uh, socially inept, I guess. Um, and then animal, I used to study or collect bugs, and I'm always, I was always very um, favored the coleopteras or, or beetles. I'd probably, and I'm on like a whole Egyptian kick right now because of whatever Moon Knight. Uh, so I would probably set, do a scare beetle right now. Although moths are also my top two because I love Mothra and all like the moth Pokemon and such. I like bugs. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> I like bugs. <laughs> I, like, I like bugs. You fucking freaks. <laughs> I'll need to tell you uh, about the time where my roommates got mad at me in college because I they kept finding the bugs I was collecting in different places. <laughs> like, Stop putting them in the freezer. Oh, it's how it's. I know, I know. <laughs> how you preserve them? Gross! I'm sorry, I'm too <laughs> roommate. You put them in a the bag. You they were me? in like yeah. stuff. They were just like okay. It's because they're cold blooded, so they just like. I'm not a cat. Just like, <laughs> just like dying. <laughs> oh, so they're just cryogenically frozen? Mm hmm. Sometimes, if they're hurt dirty enough, they'll like wake up again. But most of the time, they're dead. If you keep them in the fridge for long enough. <laughs> but it's really scary when you like think that they're dead and you're like trying to like. I'm trying to collect them and kind of. Um, pin them? Pin them. You know, and then it all of a sudden just wakes up and it's like, <laughs> That sounds like a nightmare for me, uh, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll go next. I'm Haley. <laughs> I play uh, Tweely. She is um, a Strix Druid. All she cares about in the world is preserving nature and um, stopping the climate crisis, I guess. And. Um, the bug that I would choose to be is a praying mantis, female, because I love how vicious they are. And ripping off the heads of their mates. It's pretty, it's pretty fucking metal, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Doesn't that get them to do what they're supposed to do? Like, by, by ripping off their heads, that's what makes them daddy? Well, like, like, fertile, <laughs> or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I heard that I'm, somewhere. I'm gonna <laughs> mate, and then I'm gonna rip off your head, and then I'm gonna have your baby. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Watching, watching Brian's face <laughs> this entire conversation. <laughs> I'm just finding out so many new things about you guys. Uh, uh, Loki horrifying. Me. <laughs> and, about, and about I mean, nature. are you really surprised now? Like, no, I'm me, not at all. Not at not all. Surprised. No, I'm not. I'm not shocked. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm not comforted either. <laughs> but an orchid, no, an orchid mantis like masquerades as an orchid flower. So they're beautiful, pink and white and yellow, and then they're like inside this vicious thing, you know. Let me Google this orchid. They're at Animal Crossing, if that helps. They absolutely are. Yeah. You know I can't catch those bugs. Oh what? Oh, look at she, she, she's sticking her butt out too. I relate. I know. I don't know if you could so see this mean. on stream. And yeah. everything I own has flowers on it, so like, come on. Oh yeah, she yeah, she's an icon. Okay. I guess that. I apologize. Be... I'm eating dinner. I'm so sorry. I'll be uh, in and out yeah. muting, so if you don't hear my chewing. I'm Sarah. Uh, I play Agana Kabuter. She is a gnome, but uh, also a red cap trained fighter. She is in this party as a mercenary for the king of the elves, uh, the gnomes, not the elves. She's just doing the bidding for the king of the elves. Uh, as far as bugs go, 
I would probably have to go with the B because aerodynamically they shouldn't be able to fly and yet they can fly. So specifically okay. the boom booby, the big fat boom booby, shaking her big old booby. <laughs> <laughs> but normally I would pick the Luna Moth because she's just so pretty and green. And that's it. We're all so cute. Is that everybody? Did everybody do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Yep. I would also choose the bumblebee, funny enough, because I just think they're so freaking cute. And then, like, I have all these flowers on my porch, and there's always, like, one in there with a little butt sticking out. Like, they're cute. I like them. Um, anyway, hello. <laughs> Welcome to episode three of A Doom Dynasty. When last we found our heroes, they're all in cocoons, and being carried on the backs of giant spiders into the forest. Everybody's paralyzed, except Agana, who is unconscious and paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me get in here. All right, so for those of you that are conscious and paralyzed, we'll just get into it. Um, you feel a lot of jostling in the dark, you're surrounded by these hard cocoons. And this goes on for a while. You, you feel like you're being carried very deep into the woods. And um, it takes a long time before you feel a change. Um, you feel a sharp drop in elevation, like you get that feeling in your stomach, like when you're going over a roller coaster, a very steep jump. And then some scurrying. And then finally, you're still. Let's see. Switch maps. Okay. Oh. So let me explain what we're looking at here. Is how's the volume? Is the music too loud? I'll bring it down a little bit. Thank you. All right, so what you're witnessing here is the den of spiders. And I'm gonna explain what you're seeing here before you escape, just to make the map make a little sense. So in the middle, it looks like there's a stump. That's a cross section of a giant tree. And right now you're all hanging from this tree in your separate cocoons. Over the tree is a canopy of very tightly laced, very strong spider webs. It's like you're in a cage hanging from a tree. And then I have one last thing to fix and then we'll be good. Should I start putting this like around this tree, like our tokens? Yeah, you can do that. Okay. I did my Color got all messed up. Let me fix that. It's okay. All right. So currently, you can feel a tingling um, in your extremities. You can start to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. You've been traveling for over an hour, so the effects of the paralysis are starting to wear off. And as you start to feel like you can move again, um, Mika, you feel a tearing and a jostling of your, um, of your cocoon. Forgot Dan, we gotta put Dan on there. Dan. Um, Fuck Dan! You feel a jostling. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Dan. You feel a jostling of your cocoon, and then you see a face. Alora. Alora was hiding in the bushes. She did not get captured and she followed you all the way to the den of spiders. And so she's going to start cutting each of you out of your cocoons. And then I need you to do, to tell me, how do you get out of this tree? Um, so we'll go in a circle starting with Ryan. How do you oh. get out of this tree? 
You're about 15, 20 feet up in the air. You're pretty high up, so you can't just like step out into the world. Well, maybe I can because I'm really itty bitty. And I have something called um, evanescent wings. Um, you don't need to. Oh, I thought it, it like calmed me down. <laughs> Not calmed me down, but like, you know, like a little slow fall. That's annoying. Well, if you want to, since you do have that, it doesn't exactly do this, but if you want to do like an athletics check with advantage and say that okay. you're fluttering, I would allow that. Okay. Second, well, let's see. Did I use any focus points? I didn't. Okay, excellent. Um, and we're still, um, we're still very hurt, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't long enough for it to be a long rest. Well, and I'm the first one. Okay, I'm sorry I'm asking so many questions. No, um, this I'm is the, fine. I, I, I'm the first one to wake up. Yeah, she just she just cut you out. Um, you guys are kind of waking up at around the same time because it wasn't that much time between well, paralysis. I just want to start doing medicine checks on everyone before we even think about escaping. Um, and I want to do this as stealthily as possible. So I'm gonna I'm gonna roll for stealth. Okay, got it. jump in here with the whole medicine check healing plaster. Do you have to be touching her to be able to use this? Okay, so she's um, in a yes, separate cocoon on the other side of the tree. Okay. Okay, okay yeah, if you just want to stick in a holding pattern, that's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna... It's usually yeah, fifteen. It's success. What are you waiting? <laughs> I don't know. Is there... <laughs> we'll call it a critical success. We'll call it a critical success because that's that's actually pretty good. Ooh. All right. It's your turn. Okay. Um. See, Ghana's still unconscious. Mika. Uh, I, Mika, as she's like released, like cut out, she kind of pries herself out of it. And um, with her wings out, she is able to use Nestling Fall, which is just a passive thing. As long as I can act, I take no damage from falling, no matter what distance I fall. Uh, and then she whispers to the Princess Allura, I'm so proud of you. Look at you. That was the scariest freaking thing I've ever seen. I know, I would be mad at you, but honestly, it's probably safer here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then she's on the ground now. And I guess like I can kind of be helping Allura with, you know, maybe moving people around and stuff if needed. Yeah, let's do um, Ohana next. Ohana, how are you gonna get out of this cocoon? She's cut a hole in it, you just gotta get down. I think you're muted. You're muted. Yeah. What would a dog do? Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go dog style where I'm kind of just like trying to um, uh, uh, reach back and, and bite off the tail. I'm hoping maybe that's where the hole is. Oh, it's a safe thing. Though. So it's kind of like running around tail and tail and tail, and I'm just trying to bite it. Um, I, I'm guessing that's kind of like a an armored strike. Against your tail? Well, where the hole is, so I can kind of continue scratching it. Oh. Yeah, because she she cut a she cut a hole in there. But if you want to make it like bigger or whatever you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and again, it, it's corgi like, so I'm hoping it's in the butt area because I'm gonna waddle butt it out. Okay. I'm, I'm shaking my butt and trying to wiggle through. Um. <laughs> I'm doing a strike, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it works. Not max. Oh wow. Yeah, that definitely hits. Woo! Yeah. So you're you're seeing my little waddle butt coming in and yeah, a little bit more. And it, it only has like then... a hardness of five anyway, so you're you're good. Um, I'm bet I'm thinking we're high up, right? Yeah, you're fall? about fi- you're about fifteen to twenty feet. If you try to fall from that distance, you're probably gonna hurt yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna fall from that distance. You're gonna fall from that distance. Okay. <laughs> I like. I wasn't even prepared for this. I had, I knew this was a thing, but I'm like, how do I calculate falling? Equal to half the distance you fall. Okay. So, um, do me a favor. Roll an athletics check. Let me see if you can um, kind of maybe land like a cat or something to cushion your fall. Okay. In my head, what I'm thinking is like, uh, so my dog is just fat and lazy and you have to carry it upstairs okay. but like by the time I get upstairs I'm just like so tired so I'm trying to like kind of like put him on the floor but he always wants to wiggle and like he always like drops out of my arms <laughs> and like he's not like a cat so he's always just like hits the ground like really hard and you're like oh my god I hope he didn't die <laughs> Yeah, you you did you, you did fail. <laughs> oh. um, but you only fell, let's see. So that takes that seven damage. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I think I got like forty two. Yeah. You're you were one of the lucky ones that got paralyzed quite quickly. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I didn't even think about me being attacked last time and what my HP was during that time. Okay, and then just to make things easy, Brian, do you want to do damage or do you want me to be doing it? You could do damage. Okay, because we were both doing it at the same time last I know. time. And I was like, oh, oh shit, we just did 30 damage to somebody. <laughs> I know, I felt so bad. It's just like so natural for me. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you took eight and then um, who's next? So Ghana's still unconscious, so that would be Tweely. Cool. Um, I will just pull apart the cocoon where she made the hole and nestling fall my way down as well. I guess okay. then am I is it possible for me to like kind of jump to the other cocoon so I can start healing Agana? Can I also do some medicine on, um, oh my god, what's your name? Ohana? Ohana, yeah. So let's start with Brian. Um, okay. So, so you can't fly, right? Mm-hmm. I can only do okay, it so... um, to the height of like a medium creature. Okay. So between you and, and Twilight is Wilfred. So you've got kind of like your cocoon, and then there's Wilfred's little cocoon, and then Tweely's. If you did an acrobatics check, you could attempt to maybe like swing, like like do one of those rocky swing from 
cocoon to cocoon. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Hell yeah, let me do an acrobatics for that. 28! Yeah, that, that succeeds. Okay, cool. And then... So when I get there, obviously I'm going to use Healing Plaster. It's a cantrip. And then I'm going to treat wounds. Let me roll medicine check. Link. And it's, oh no. Do you want to use a hero point or you want to leave it there? I'll use a hero point. Let me give myself a hero point. Oh okay, yeah, everybody got a hero point today, so. You don't already Yay! have three. There we go. Success, but it's a success. Uh, oh, Nine. Okay. okay. I was like clicking it, nothing was happening. I think my computer is just slow today. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, right. okay. Agana, you're you're conscious now, and you can move. Am I inside my cocoon still? Yeah. So you're inside your cocoon. You see okay. uh, Mildred there, kind of like in your in your cocoon with you, like putting putty just like on you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no problem. <laughs> and I just slap it across your face. <laughs> Smear it across your lips. Alrighty, so... I think... I would test... Like, make the hole a little bit bigger. Obviously for my body to get through. And then I would sort of gather it together to make myself a rope so that I can swing to the tree and then climb down. I would, I'm gonna toss this out there if you want to take the easy route. You all have adventures packs with rope in your packs. <laughs> what am I gonna tie it to? The cocoon, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I could do branch. that. Tie to a branch. Well, I mean, Twilly and Mika were so cool with their wings, so... Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. I, wish you were on. I thought, like, I thought half of you had wings. I, I didn't realize Brian couldn't fly. And um, I spent half of my childhood in trees, so this yeah. is no problem for me to... Yeah, the only reason I'm throwing it out there... Them. Yeah, the only reason I was throwing it out there is because those cocoons are actually, like, quite hard. Like, they're, they're not soft anymore, so you wouldn't... They're not, like, pliable. They're like a shell, so you wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, so I can't swing with it. Could you make them like a parachute? Probably not. Mm. Um, especially 15 feet up. I don't think it would slow you down very much. I think you'd still fall like a stone. <laughs> oh, girl, this has a grappling hook in it? Yeah, like it has no. all kinds of shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl! <laughs> I, I, I just take like, that grappling hook, throw it over, and then swing myself down. Do my all right, can. Yeah, if you want to use your grappling hook too, you can um, do an athletics check for that. When can I oh, heal um, Ohana or Ohana? Yeah, you can after uh, after if she successfully gets to the ground, you can do that after that. Nope, I don't um, know. Well, you rolled as you rolled as Victor. How did I do that? I, think I don't she know. Hit their um, token clicked. So click on yours with the little square icon, and oh, then okay. roll for it. Yeah, you can re-roll. Click yourself and re-roll, because I think you have a better... There, there she we is. Go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you, su you successfully climbed down. All right. As I'm healing both roads. Do we want to cut these cocoons down and wear them as a little disguise so we can like walk around cocoons over ourselves and then like you know like Metal Gear Solid with the box? With the box <laughs> yes, absolutely. We can, we can hold it down and they'll help us stealth around. Yes, okay. 100%. All right. I'm gonna okay. use my sickle and I'm gonna try to jump from like cocoon to cocoon. Okay. 
So before we get to your cocoon cutting yeah. plan, uh, if you want to go ahead and heal Ohana, Tweetly, you're good to do that. Oh my god. All right, where the hell? I've been trying to look around and find out where I'm supposed to click for this. Um, uh, go into your actions. Yes, I'm in actions now. And, and it says gonna... treat wounds. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, and then you want to go into skills and then medicine. Yeah, for some dumb reason, they don't have it in here. In where this, like, are my chat skills? Thing. It'll be the open hand. Oh, that's okay. Okay, okay, okay. And then you're going to click you. on the number. Um, for medicine. There it is. Okay. Nice. Nice. Twenty-six. Is that a critical success or is that a regular success? That is a regular success. No, you know, twenty-six. No, that's a critical success. Woo. Yeah. 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 Do it, Twilly. There we go. There we go. HP. For you! Nature bitches, show up! That's right. That's a lot. Around, plants are surrounding me. I'm in the zone. I'm about to heal your ass. There you go. All right. So. Oh, 17 HP. Yeah, because he had. It wasn't down that far. Okay. So. Cool. Um, so that leaves us with uh, Wilfred is kind of still up in the tree, and then Mildred has declined to come down yet. So what are we doing? Okay, okay, let me heal Wilfred. Poor baby. Yeah, he's unconscious too, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's which is fucked up. And that. Uh... Yep, normal success. I'll catch some. I can. So, yeah. Yeah, we can catch. I'll catch too. Yeah, Alora can fly too, so she's gonna fly up and help you, so you don't have to do another check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She could do something. Your friend can do something at least. She cut us out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. I forgot about that. I, I know it just happened. Literally ten like, seconds ago. So all right. You still owe us. <laughs> All right, so everybody's down on the ground, everybody's conscious, everybody can move, and we've got kind of like seven cocoon husks. Um, I'm gonna let you know a little bit about these um, in case you do decide to use them. They have a hardness of like five um, and an AC of 20. So if, you know, they're, they're like, they're, they're hardish and they're, they're hardish to hit. I would caution you to rely on them too much because if you recall, there are Goliath spiders here. <laughs> and 20 is like an AC 10 to them. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. So before we do anything, can we all do perception checks? Cause I wanna see what you guys can see in this uh, can. There's it's like a, it's like, it's almost like a crater. Nice. 30, nice. 30. 24. Oh. Twilly's in her element. That's why I'm rolling so high. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Still waiting on Agana um, and Ohana. It will be in, like, the red, like, tabard area right underneath your shield stuff and your armor. Yeah. Um, right above the This happened last time. When I hit the actual die to, to turn to actually do it, it doesn't go. Oh, you'll get a pop-up. It doesn't go to it, though. Like, I'm looking, there's no pop-up. I'll, I'll do it for you. Okay. I got you. I saw a No, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so... My dog is barking at my door. Hold One did on. come through. To... It did? Oh. I'll be right back. I have to look at my door. Okay. Okay, 
So we got everybody's perception checks. Um, and it looks like everybody did okay. Um, Agana, you might not see as much, but you were just really super unconscious. So maybe you're still yeah, a little I dazed. Mud in my eye. Don't know how I got mud in my eye. But... Yeah, you also have mud in your eyes. <laughs> Hey, yeah, you play in the mud, you get mud in your eye, what can I say? Yeah, yeah so, um, what you guys see, it's still pretty dark, um, but with everything in First World, the cat, the purple cast from the Crystal Palace shines through this web dome that you're under. Um, so you can still see relatively well. Um, if you look up, you do see the extremely tall tree that you're just hanging out of. You see even higher, there's like 30, 40 cocoons in this tree. Um, probably filled with dead people. Um, there is very tightly knit web domed over the top and kind of draping around um, this cavern that you're in. Um, the walls on the sides are extremely steep. Um, and very smooth, you'd probably have a hard time climbing. Um, but for those of you who, let's see, Mildred, Tweely, you guys can actually see almost a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm gonna ping over here. There's kind of a exit, kind of straight ahead from you guys to the right there. Um, but what you might have a hard time seeing is that you're standing on rocks right now and then surrounding it, it almost looks like you're in the middle of a lake. Um, it looks like you're surrounded by a rippling, iridescent black liquid. It's not water. You can't see, it looks like it in the picture, but you can't see through it. <laughs> it's just like this rippling black mass. Is that Tar, I'm gonna roll a nature check. Okay, I critically <laughs> failed, but I got critically it. failed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't switch throw throwing down. Can I? I'm gonna try um, that as well. Yeah, anybody wants to do any checks here? Okay, so Mildred, you just see goo and you're like, that's tar. <laughs> um, however, Ghana, <laughs> you creep a little bit closer, and upon closer inspection, it's not a liquid at all. It's trillions and trillions of tiny baby spiders. <gasps> nope. Kill it with fire. I, I start to like pick it up using one of my potion bottles so I can make a potion out of it later. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> okay. Anybody else want to do any checks about these spiders? Oh. Maybe I could identify them and being like, and, and see if they're like babies of very dangerous spiders or if they're like, what kind of spiders they are. Or are they harmless right now? Yes, I, I love that. that. Where's um, my nature check? That's going to be in the icon with the hand. That's right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to try to identify these spiders. Okay. Do, do, do. Mm. Yeah, I think that, yeah, 15 isn't bad. Um, you might have encountered these in your time um, in the rainforest where your druid order lives. Um, these are teeny tiny magical baby camel spiders. And what you know about camel spiders is that they use venom to melt flesh <gasps> to, cons to eat. And Brian was kind enough in the last episode to do nature checks for you to learn a little bit about the spiders as you were going unconscious. And you know from those rules that there is a hive mind situation going on with these spiders. All right, so the, the moral of the story is don't touch them and they will not alert their elders, I'm assuming. Or, you know, I, I would caution doing much with them because it could be yeah. a very like Brennan Fraser the mummy situation. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, can I potentially like? It, I don't see a skill here for flying, but I can I fly high, yeah. over them? Mm -mm. You can't fly very high at all because the um, the web that's over it's kind of like draping down from the tree. So you probably oh, wouldn't be I'm able sorry. to get I very far. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. You're fine. 
I also don't think the Strix wings let us fly, like, which is sad because we have big wings, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can get that later. Yeah, we can yeah, jump I think high. It's, I think it's a feat. I think it's a feat that you get later. Okay, okay. I'm quite guys. I have an idea. This is probably a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I have two ideas. First idea. So you know I can talk to Buzz right or insectoids as we like to be called i can convince them i can try to convince them at least that i am their mother and that they'll move out of the way for me and i can part the sea of these spiders or maybe they'll just really like me i have the, like a comedy routine i developed like a thousand years ago but it's pretty it's pretty rusty okay my second idea we use the cocoons as boats and we just try to get past because there's a chance that that will be resistant to the whatever they spit out because it's the same as them since it's, the, it's a part of their own mm -hmm. anatomy right Mm -hmm. I also have a distraction idea. I could summon an elemental far away or in the other in the other area and like as a distraction and then we could escape quickly. But I like the boat idea. That's that's really cool. Okay, also, that... I have Pass Without Trace that I could cast on someone who isn't particularly stealthy. I think you can cast it on all of us. Can I? I don't know. That's how Let me they check do it, it in D&D. Yeah. Uh... So, uh, what do we want to go with, Ryan? Do you want to try to talk to the babies? If that's cool with everybody I wanna... else. I think I want to pass without trace all of us first, just in case. Yeah. Is that chill? Yeah. Also, maybe not mother, but like big brothers and sisters that's what we all are yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i think that's a good idea yeah yeah uh, what about a reach maybe i should just like play to the reasoning um okay i'm gonna do that so i as i tried to really break the scenario last time i have what's it called I have something. Oh, because I'm a Malixi. Um, I don't know why it's not on my character sheet, though, but I'm a Malixi, whatever, sprite. And it's being dumb. Um, and it's it allows me to speak to, like, insects. I'm going to go up to these baby spiders, seem like, Oh, oh, hi there. I didn't see you there. Wow. You, you come here often? <laughs> and they're just like, who is? Who is? You just hear like a million little voices, tiny voices say that at the same time. Why, it's me, your good friend Mildred Dewsuckle. Danger. Danger. Roll danger. Roll no, 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 There's no danger. Stranger. There's no danger. I'm not a stranger. I, I was the one who came up with the idea of you guys. Don't they tell you this? I'm the one who came up with the idea of bugs. Can we hear her? Is she talking? Or is it in her, in her mind? <laughs> no, it's like, <laughs> or whatever sound spiders make. Do me a favor. Know. Um, because you can talk to bugs and these are babies, I'll give you advantage. Can you do a diplomacy check for me? Oh, I have a minus, like, two. <laughs> 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 well, is that, can someone aid me on this? I want- I don't know how I could aid you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine looking friendly. I don't know. I don't know if I I'll try to aid you with a thumbs up. Good luck. <laughs> oh. Okay. Roll again. There you go. Okay. That's not terrible. 
Okay, so the babies aren't totally convinced that they know you, but like they're they're still they're curious though. They're not like <laughs> sound the alarms yet. Oh, I know what I can do. Oh, I don't know if this is a good idea though. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try this and then we could go with Tully's idea. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm Okay, I can be like, yeah, 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 I'm cool, I'm cool. L listen, I can even make more of you guys. And you just feel like, Mommy makes more. Mommy, mommy's making now. Yeah, me, me and your mom. Me and, who's your mom? Who's your mom? Mommy is the most beautiful. Well, I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I'm sure she's cute, but cute next to gorgeous. I mean, really. But um, <laughs> but see, I can. But you know, I'm just like your mom. Yeah, I can make more. See, <laughs> and then I throw up. I use my spell Vomit Swarm, and I throw up more of these spiders. Me too! Yeah. Ew! We don't yeah, know them! They aren't us! That, But, you know, see, I'm just like your mom. See, it's the beauty of life. That's not how mommy does it. Mom, you watch your mommy do that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I look over at everyone else like, Does anybody want to do any rolls yeah, about help me, help me. these fucking spiders? Weaknesses, strengths, anything. Uh, <laughs> I'm not getting far. Uh, I'm good at killing shit. Sorry. I'm yes. terrible at creating a diversion, but I can summon an elemental. Uh... Can I do a society check? Like, I know stuff about the spiders. Do I know anything about... Okay. The spider? If you want to do a... About spider culture? Yeah, <laughs> if you want to do a society check. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, okay. A 14, a 14 is respectable. So what you know about um, the spiders is that they live in the realm of night, which is where the vampires and the goblinoids live and kind of their own sparse, it's a separate domain within the realm of night, which is part of the, the first world continent. Um, and you know that they like to be in the realm of night because they don't really like daylight. They're, they're a nocturnal race. Um, I have dancing lights as a cantrip. Can I scare them away? That you would not can, be a good yeah. idea, probably. No, you can try that. That might not be terrible. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, that's... I think we can see how they, they react. They don't like but... light? We can try it. So I could, like... Okay, so I could cast dancing light in... Or dancing lights, plural. There are four floating lights. So I can put them in a line to where I saw like the escape route like you told me that there was something over to the right of where we are the pin yeah so i could put four little dancing lights in a little pathway so we could like jump down and kind of scurry out of this like pit you try that okay great oh before we do it very... yeah before we oh, do, we'll it, do it they okay. have a hive mind yeah that's so true that alert the spider Probably. Can I do an arcana check to see if, okay, maybe this isn't, I don't know. Y'all tell me if this makes sense, but I have dispel magic and I'm trying to see if I can dispel the hive mind from like the spiders. Is that like, is it's that not like a spell? Okay. I couldn't, rem I didn't know if it was a spell or not. Okay. never mind. Ignore. And I mean, I I would also throw out that Mildred has been talking to this sea of baby spiders. Like, the sp they know you're here. They're talking to you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
Well, let, me just, <laughs> let me just ask them if they can move out of our way then. Oh, good. Yeah, they don't, you know, I've got to report with them. I'm like, hey, hey. You I never know if you don't ask. Yeah, I yeah, well, the worst they could say is no, or the even more worst they could say is, hi, mommy, they're here, so. Well, no, just do it. You know, us nature girls should be supporting each, like, other nature girls, okay? And you're not being a girl's girl right now. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna... <laughs> I support you 100%. <laughs> so, ba baby spider, can you move out of our way? <laughs> Can we walk Why? Because I want to say hi to your mom. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want it to be a surprise. I actually have get, I, I have a present for her. Okay. So they like that you want to see mama. <laughs> we go way back. So they you see it part into a, a narrow trail that you guys can walk down towards the exit. Why did they um, upload it? <laughs> so, you guys gonna go down the trail? <laughs> so, which, uh, where is it going? Where is it going? Is it going straight, towards straight the into it her mouth? Um, so it's going to the right. If, it's going to the right of the map. If you kind of zoom out, there's a little bit of a uh, gap between the walls, so that you can um, kind of walk through. So that trail would be through that water, and through that path. Okay. Okay. But like, is. is... Is that the only, like, exit-ish or way that's that the we only know to go? That's the only obvious exit. Um, the walls are very sheer. There's probably not much to grab onto, and you basically have a giant net on top. Um, yeah. The princess was able to get to you by, like, scurrying under and folding her wings back and then sliding down the side of the wall. So getting out that way isn't really a possibility. Okay. Can everybody see? But you guys have a trail. Oh yeah, it's 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 like the parting of the Red Sea. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Let's I mean, go. I, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming Mildred is up in front. Oh yeah, I'm in front. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, definitely yeah. in front. Okay. Okay. Obviously, are, are we wearing Mildred our is little flying. things? What? Are we wearing our cocoon? Yeah. I think that's a really Ooh. smart idea. I want to don mine. Yeah. Yeah, okay. no, we're just gonna do. So, I'm running back. And as I'm like walking through it, I'm like, so what is she up to these days? Like, what? <laughs> You'll see. Oh. oh. <laughs> as you guys get to the edge, um, right in front of you, the spiders kind of pool together and then rise into a column right in front of you, about person sized. And then it falls away to reveal the mother of spiders. She's the Ooh. spider queen. Um, she looks like, basically it's hard to see her because she's covered in this gossamer-like veil from head to toe in spider webs. Um, you can see through it enough to see her very bony corpse-like frame. And her abdomen is swollen. She's very obviously pregnant. Um, and through the veil, um, it's just transparent enough that you can see her corpse-like face and grin as she takes, she just takes you all in. Um, and she's just like, daughter of Denzar in my domain, how interesting. What are you doing here? <laughs> and don't lie, I can tell. And if you look down, you're, the baby spiders have covered you in these very thin um, strands of web that lead straight to the spider mother. So she could probably tell like any kind of raise and heartbeat or anything like that. So she could probably tell if you're lying. Uh, so what are you all doing here? Who's gonna speak? <laughs> Mika That's takes a great question. Mika takes like the the like courtly lady stance and is like, well, um, oh, like not your honor. What would I? What would your grace? Your grace. <laughs> <laughs> your grace. <laughs> um, 
I am her lady in waiting, and honestly, this was a grave mistake. We got lost on a journey um, and ended up here. We were led astray by our um, leader, Dan, uh, <laughs> who was overconfident, and this was all a huge misunderstanding. A journey? Where? Uh, to the All Mother. Ah, to the All Mother. A daughter of Denzar travels to the forest looking for its heart and not its head. Interesting. Very interesting. It would be very interesting to let us see our journey through. peaceful passage would that make us allies allura would that make us allies <laughs> she's just like i don't fucking know she's just like frozen in fear <laughs> yes like, just, just say whatever the fuck you have to let's just get the fuck out of here <laughs> you we would be allies in this situation oh, <laughs> oh that would be interesting Daughter of Denzar, my ally. An enemy of my enemy, perhaps. Very well, daughter of Denzar. I will let you pass and give you safe passage through my realm. And then in return, we could be allies. What does being an ally mean to you? Just as you call on me, perhaps someday I'll call on you. You you mentioned something about you having enemies. Who's it? Who? 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 Um, and and I guess in regards, she's she's like com she's more beast than animal kin, right? She is creepy. <laughs> she's, she's basically like a cryptid. She's terrifying. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so she's, she's not really yeah. she's not really beast. She's not really fae. She's just real scary monster lady. Uh -huh. And we're not like in the elven realm, right? We're in their territory. We're in yeah, the Yeah, you're you're deep in spider territory. I don't cross them. <laughs> what? I'm with the fucking dog. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't trust beasts and, 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 and monsters, so. Yeah. Um, it's wow. okay. You don't have to voice this right I, now. I, I, I mean, I mean I'm, other than saying I'm not, I don't trust them. I, I think that that's as far as I'm going. So, yeah. Well, perhaps. You would give us an opportunity to earn that trust. Wow, how? You, you <laughs> paralyzed us. You, you kind of lost that, <laughs> that trust. But... Oh, my apologies. My children, to protect their mother and their family, will always bring a meal when it wanders so willingly into our territory. But we are champions of the forest. We, especially I, am very friendly to all realms of nature. So we would, it would be abhorrent to me to do any damage to your realm. All we need is safe passage through and we will be peaceful and willing to cooperate. That's what I'm offering. I accept. <laughs> I'm not the speaker of our group, but I, also, I, I'm, I accept. So I my, well, allies or enemies. Allies, allies, allies. Yeah, you seem cool. I'll, I'll, I'll Here, let me leave you my card. I, you I can call me at any time. Daughter of Denzar, an ally of mine. Interesting. And then she collapses <laughs> into a sea of spiders, and the way is clear. 
Oh my god, I want to beat her so bad. I know, right? <laughs> what a badass! All right, so you guys have sex successfully escaped the lair of the mother of spiders. <laughs> At what cost? At what cost? Yeah, you don't know. We, we, we don't know we yet. We didn't discuss and make an agreement. What's going on? So, as soon as you're out of the realm, um, there's a giant spider um, that's waiting near the exit, and it kind of tells Mildred and in, in um, bug speak that the den of the All Mother is due west. Do not, do not stray north. They can't protect you there. Which reminds me, out of character, didn't someone? detect that Dan led us astray? Yes. Yeah. So, um, Queely, during that yeah. fight, um, Brian was having you do nature checks to kind of learn a little bit more about the enemy and what was going on. And what you were able to find out is that um, to run into spiders of that strength and magnitude and size and everything, you would have had to have strayed into the realm of spiders and Dan was the one leading you guys, which by the way, you don't know who Dan is because you, you guys were here. But anyway, Dan is the Prince of the Werewolf Clan. He is a ranger. Um, he's very like used to traveling in the wild. So he was leading your group. Um, so you were led to the conclusion that Dan must have led you astray because you were supposed to be going due Northwest and instead you went straight North. Okay. All right. Um, so, is he with us now? Mm-hmm. Yep, he's, he's been silently Dan, with Dan, what the time. hell? I don't, I don't know. I, I was given this stupid wayfinder, and he pulls out the wayfinder. He said, I was told that this would lead us straight there. I don't know what happened. Can I detect if he's lying? Go ahead. Uh, do a How perception do do check. Okay. Perception is fine. I'm used to insight, but yeah. I know. 22 is really good. He he seems earnest. Um, mm -hmm. He he takes this wayfinder and he just like smashes it on the ground. Okay. Uh, well, Fudge, we could have like looked at it and stuff. It's not gone. It's well, still there. <laughs> but if it but if he is depending on it and it let us do north instead of do northwest like we were supposed to, it doesn't seem like it's doing that great of a job. No, but if it was, like, hacked or something... Do you want to do there... a crafting check? I could do a detect magic check on it, too. Mm -hmm. You could also do that. I'll, I'll detect magic see if it's a uh, cursed or something. Oh, Hannah, aren't, like, your shoonies, like, good at crafting and stuff? Uh, am I? I would hope where, I gave you Where is my skills? Uh, I would hope. Where can I put this detect magic circle? Um, just around you guys. Yeah. Boop. Or you could just say that you did it because we're not really in combat or anything if you don't want to place a circle. How do I, know I already at, did at and I don't know what to do about it. You're <laughs> totally fine. It can live there. Um, yeah, so you cast detect magic. You feel magic everywhere. It's mm -hmm. in the trees, it's in the ground. Um, you do feel two strong sources of magic currently. Um, one is coming from the Wayfinder. It does have a magical element to it. Um, and then you also detect an object in Mika's possession that's radiating very strong magic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just gonna check out the Wayfinder and um, I want to pick it up and I want to see like if there's any, it, do I understand what kind of magic it is or I just like, so, can I learn anything more about it? Can you do, cause it's, it's less of a spell. Could you do a society check for me and then I'll explain why? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So explain, explain the crafting. Oh know. yeah, you have the skill for crafting that's like a plus nine, so they'll help you. Well, I would imagine it would help you like discern like how this is built and stuff. So, so that's kind of in my skills. 
Mm -hmm. It's in the open oh, hand yeah. one, okay. yeah. Okay, and, and then in terms of like, what about the talismans? Is that? Yeah, you can make like two of them every day, um, and then we can activate them. So you would give it to us, and then you can activate it. Ah. And then. So. Okay, cool. Uh, I'll have uh, to read them. Okay. So with a 13, um, what you know of Wayfinders is that they aren't really an object used very much in First World. In fact, they're mostly used in Glorian primarily by the Pathfinder Society. It's like, it's weird that you would find one here and it was given to one of you to be in your possession. Um, a Wayfinder contains a singular Aeon Stone and this gives the Wayfinder the ability to like glow and point in the right direction. Um, and, but you notice that in this Wayfinder, there are two, which isn't really normal. And from your cursory knowledge of Wayfinders, A, he's from Galorian, that's weird, to two Aeon Stones. That seems weird, but you wouldn't know any more than that with a 13. Okay. I would assume that those two things might be interfering with each other and creating false direction, but that's just my lack, my, um, the jump, the conclusion I'm jumping to. Um, yeah, so Dan's gonna pipe up because he knows a lot about these. That's exactly it. This is weird. Okay. Um, typically mm -hmm. having two Aeon Stones, they can kind of make the thing go wonky. Do we have some way of tinkering with it, uh, or a way to create our own in some way? Like you, you could else? try a you could try a crafting check if you want to try to put it back together. My um, crafting is very. I don't, low. but yeah, but and also because you guys aren't like craftsmen, it, it's kind of like a specialty item. It's like a watch. You know, mm. if a watch was smashed in front of you, you probably wouldn't be able to put that back together. So you could try, but I couldn't guarantee it would actually point in the right direction. I, I will try it. Or you I'll want to try to put it together? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Doing this. I'm, I'm looking up, like, right now, like, my um, talismans and seeing if I can, I don't know, apparently affix a talisman and that'll help. I'm, I'm trying this new mechanic. Monkey pin. That sounds like something. That's a cute pun right there you just did. I'm gonna try a mechanic. <laughs> All right. Mechanical so, object. with a roll of twenty-seven, I mean you can you can put it back together, but it's not functional. <clears throat> okay. I mean, I, I guess that's enough for now. It's not functional, um, but. Okay, I guess so. I guess we're kind of figuring out our own way then. Let's, I mean, I have a high survival. I could figure out where the cardinal directions are. Is that true mm -hmm. with my survival? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to In do my a survival check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, 28, you know, you know, due west is that way. Cool. So um, <laughs> I can lead the way to the northwest trail that we were supposed to go on. I'm right, like, Dan, you're else... no longer in charge of this. Get to the back of the line. It wasn't me. That thing was tampered with. Well, you should have known that. <laughs> oh, and I know that. It was pointing in the right direction. Its direction was know. the direction I was told was the direction. Okay, well, it obviously led us astray, so your turn is over. <laughs> your turn is over. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anybody, else want... anybody else want to do anything? Um... I actually I'm sorry, should I be mean to him? I'm sorry. But... No, I like being mean to Dan is totally normal. Okay, chill. <laughs> yeah. Let's chill. <laughs> oh, dang Um, wait, uh, Sarah, and what I were I don't get along well with the werewolf clan anyway, so go on. Uh, Twe Tweely's got it, but I actually had my own survival sense of direction one that I was gonna throw out, but... Oh. It's cool. What I'm just your knife. So you can aid her and then make her roll better. It was already a success. Aid her. <laughs> well, it could be a critical success. Right? She's just, she's just trying to find out which way West was. Oh, yeah, it's not that hard. You 
could look at the trees and figure that shit out. Look at um, the little baby. Oh. Oh. Hi. No player on the board. <laughs> what is that? Hi, baby. That's my little niece, little Lori. Cute. Oh. <laughs> um. What I'm gonna do, I don't have enough time. Do you remember who gave us the Wayfinder? You have not asked. Dan, who gave you the Wayfinder? <laughs> it was given to me by one of the clerics who said it was given to her by King Taryn, I think. You think? I think. I mean, she said it was from the gnome. I just assumed that was from him. Well, Agana, what do you have to say about this? This is very interesting. We make shit. It's what we do. Mm. Okay. He's my boss. If if he commissions something, it had to have been done for a reason. What Other cleric? That, I don't know. What cleric gave it to you? The the lead one, the one who was doing all the. Was that the lady that was like, go oh, no? That was that was a uh, a leshy. <laughs> okay. The radish queen. Mm -hmm. The radish queen. She would never. True. <laughs> do uh, do okay. I know the cleric that was doing all the things? Um, she's she's like the head cleric in the castle. They kind of okay. like, you know, they roam around doing weird religious shit. <laughs> It sounds like probably, my whole hometown. They're very, they're very pious and kind of unnerving to be around. So you probably keep your distance. Good advice for everyone. <laughs> well, clearly it's been tampered with, and someone wanted this mission to fail. I'm just gonna say it. So, absolutely. I, I don't know what's happening. My goal is to keep the princess safe by any means necessary. And she's, so she kind of- I'm sorry. So she's she's gonna kind of speak up here and just say, speaking of my safety, <laughs> we're half lost. We just got attacked. <laughs> I'm fucking tired. I just ran over an hour through the woods chasing you guys and then cutting you out of cocoons. I need to go to bed. Why did you run? You have wings. Thanks though for that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Mildred, why did you fly? Oh, wait, thanks. <laughs> they would see me. I'm a giant flying thing. I, I had to sneak. Sneaky. I forgot that some of us aren't so little. <laughs> Do we all have um, Pass Without Trace on still? It's not been eight, it's not been eight hours, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we would still have it on us. And then, yeah, I mean, as far as, like going to bed you have safe passage to the spider kingdom i mean now would probably be a good time if you guys wanted to take a long rest yeah 100%. do it get yep, your yep, points yep. back do a little bit more healing mm -hmm. stuff like that uh, so how long does it take for me to make talisman stuff is that like a thing that i can do during a rest for you i think it would yeah um yeah you could definitely do that during <clears> that. I think it's like 10 minutes since you have it as an archetype. And then I don't know how long for you to make them just to make them. Okay. So, yeah. So, Allison, Okay. Let's, let me get the macro for rest for the night. Unless there's like a button on. Is there a button for rest for the night on our character Yeah, sheet? there's a button on your sheet. Oh, it's look. underneath your max HP. There's a little oh, a it's bed. A bed. Oh, it's a bed. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, on. Yeah, so oh, if y'all no. want to rest, um, and then we'll do okay. your talisman thing in a minute, Victor. Can I All right. ask? What? I'm sorry. Can I ask where, where we think the next area is going to be? Like, do we have a map that's pointing us into like the next kingdom? So you, you do have a map. Um, and the Radish Queen was nice enough to, if you remember, to, she did mark the location. It just like didn't really help because there were no roads. Mm -hmm. um, you can see on the map that you're in the Spider Kingdom, and just mm -hmm. as the Spider Queen said, due west, 
along the border is where she marked the den of the All Mother. So it's like you're almost there. Okay. And the den of the All Mother, that's where the most like, animalistic like group of they are. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now I can prepare. And myself. that's where we're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's where you guys are ultimately headed. Thank you. All right. So, are we all ready to sleep? Yes. Okay. I feel like you're goading us into a trap. <laughs> like, are you ready to let your guard down? Always. This whole game is a fucking trap. All right. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. as as you guys lull to sleep, um, you're you're in a very very deep sleep and you all begin to dream. So I'm gonna kind of go around in a circle and talk about what you're dreaming about. Um, we're gonna start with Agana. <laughs> so- I don't dream. I this dream. is, this dream is actually a memory and it's one that you have recurring um, and you recognize where you are immediately. You're a child. Um, you're laying in the loft of your family's cabin and it's very warm. You can smell bread baking in the oven below you. You can hear your mother humming. You've had a long day of helping with chores and catching butterflies. This is probably the last time in your life that you ever felt peace. And as you lay there, you know what's coming. Um, you're startled awake by the sound of your mother's screams. And you can hear your father struggling with something, and then you hear a thud. Terrified, you crawl to the edge of the loft, where you see four men standing above your mother, holding their hair, her hair in one of their hands, pulling her face up. She makes eye contact with you. And a single tear runs down her cheek. She mouths the words, run. And then her throat is slit. <gasps> you, startled, jump backwards, knocking over a sack of flour. Just as you do, the faces of the four men turn to you. And this is where the memory takes a very dreamlike turn. It's almost like the room starts to fill with a fog. And the faces of the men, two of them, their faces match Denzar, and the other two are the faces of King Terran, the Gnome King. You stumble backwards, you jump out the window into a cart full of hay that waits outside, and you run into the forest. Um, the dream has taken back that memory of, of the rest of your childhood of surviving alone in the forest. Um, we see flashes of you growing a little older, your hair through the stress goes through this bleaching. This is how it is now a stark white. Um, you, you remember this time while scary is, is also kind of pleasant. The forest took care of you in this time. And then you see the red cap gnomes that found you in the forest and took you in. And you see growing with them and learning how to fight. This is also a memory. And then you see the moment that they find out that you're not actually one of their own and just a feral child and them abandoning you. And again, their faces change. Um, everyone in the village has the face of Denzar or King Terran. And your head fills with this voice. It's a voice that's made out of many voices whispering loudly in your ear. Um, your suffering was their fault. You're here because of them. They must be stopped. And then that's where your dream ends. Tweely. You have a memory as well. Your dream starts out as, as, as a memory of you in the, in the rainforest uh, where your juridic order lives. There's flashes of lightning and rain. It's always storming there. This is a pleasant day for you. You're not, you're unbothered by it. 
Um, you're much younger. This is probably when you first arrived at the order. Um, you're near the beach and you hear a very tiny cry, like a baby. And you dig through the underbrush, heading towards the beach. And when you arrive at the beach, you see a ship, but the, uh, the remains of a shipwreck. And laying on the beach crying is a little baby raffle girl. <gasps> this, is, this is the memory of how you met Cassie. Oh, Cassie. You carry her back through the forest. And as you do, it's kind of a time lapse of her and you getting bigger, walking through together, her helping you gather things, you teaching her about the forest. You have a very big sister, little sister relationship with Cassie. Um, and then everything kind of freezes and Cassie kind of turns to you and she says, you have to, you have to stop it. And just as she says it, she disappears into the shadows and the rainforest around you is engulfed in flames. You see smoke rolling in. You see loggers cutting down the trees and you reach out to try to stop them and your hands go through them like they're a ghost or you're a ghost, you don't know which. Everything you try to do to stop this destruction from happening is futile. You drop to your knees and you begin to cry. And then you realize someone's standing next to you. It's the high priestess of your, of your Druid order. And she speaks to you with a voice that's made up of many voices layered up on top of each other. And she says to you, these aren't the real problems. The fight you're fighting isn't real. You have to cut the head off the snake. And that's where your dream ends. Mika. Your dream, it's, it's a memory, but not one that's fueled by emotion. You find yourself in the treasury room of the castle again, and you're surrounded by fog. You see all the chests are open. You see little ring boxes everywhere. You know that you have the correct one in your pocket. You feel this sense of success, but the fog, there's a fog in the room and it thickens and it starts to swirl around you like a tornado. And a voice enters your mind, like many voices layered on top of each other. And it says, you walked right past it. There is something there, you need to find it. And that's where your dream ends. Mildred, your dream starts off as a memory, a very, very old memory that spans thousands of years. You're on the battlefield during the endless war. There's carnage all around you, you're flitting from body to body trying to heal, but also attack. Um, it's chaos. And then you hear a loud creaking, a thunderous sound like mountains falling. You turn around and it's as if the world is starting to fold upwards and around you and you're surrounded, everything gets foggy. You see everybody around you start to disappear. And, and the, the battle is over and you're alone, stuck inside this giant structure of earth and trees. And a voice enters your head. You've heard this voice before. You recognize it as the mysterious voice of your patron the sound of many voices layered on top of each other. And all it says is, free them. And that's where your dream ends. Ooh. Ohana. Oh. <laughs> You're having a great dream. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're <laughs> seeing you're seeing a montage play through your mind of all of your good deeds and all of these people that you've helped and them thanking you with tears in their eyes and these memories just flash through your brain and you end up as things slowing in the hut of a young rat folk family and they look at you and they're like they, all they say is thank you you don't know what you've done you don't really care you just know that you've helped them and then the scene shifts everything gets a little darker you're surrounded by a fog and the woman looks you straight in the eye deadpan and she just says you haven't helped me you haven't helped anyone and then a cage forms over her head and you reel backwards through these memories at dizzying speed and everyone has a cage on their head and that's where your dream ends <laughs> you all you all snap awake at the same time cold sweats panting shooting up i need everyone to do a will save for me to see if they remember their dream oh no oh, oh, oh. wait 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 um dang it dang it um i i'm gonna do one of my feet not that i could bring shit like that um <laughs> uh, Loyal empath. Can I use my reaction to help someone get a bonus to their will saving throw? If you want to. Okay. Ooh. Who are you helping? Oh, who had the best dream that I need them to remember? Um. Uh. I'm gonna say Tweely. Tweely was the druid, right? Druid dream? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that was really important. Cool. Okay. How do I, how do I, do I roll again? Yeah, what do I do? So I, uh, if I give him roll aid. The, uh, roll the aid action from the chat. Looks like a pop up. Yeah. Do a skill check. Surprise is check or an attack roll? It's in the chat. Yeah, but it like pops. It, you can't look from that like little briefcase. It doesn't make another chat message. It's like a pop up. Uh, so when you use your aid action, attempt a skill check or attack roll of a type decided by the GM. The typical task DC is 20, but the GM oh. might adjust this DC for a particularly hard or easy task. OK, so yeah, you tell me what I, I should roll. Um, okay, so as I'm unpacking this, this would be really, this would be very difficult. You would have to critically succeed mm -hmm. um, because you all just woke up and you, you don't know what she's seen and you don't even really know that she's dreamed anything. So I guess um, in the weirdness, I mean, try it, try a diplo we'll do diplomacy. Because that's the only thing that I can think of. I would have loved if you critically succeeded. <laughs> you. It was you high, not... but that's not enough. Okay. No, no. So, yeah, that wasn't enough. And I, I think I forgot um, my dream. Yeah, I you I... did for. You don't remember your dream, Ohana. It's just like, it's like a nagging feeling at the tip of your tongue. You know, you saw something scary. You know, you saw something important, but you can't quite remember it everyone else you remember yours um and then it's it's up to you do you tell each other or do you keep it to yourself uh i'll notice that other people are around me dripping sweat similarly to me and i'll say um that's weird that we all awoke and are visibly disturbed at once what happened 
So yeah, anyway. so just to, for the for the sake of time, is everybody gonna tell each other what they dreamed, or is anybody gonna keep it to themselves? I'm gonna keep it to myself. I'm gonna keep it to, to myself. I, to yourself. I say, I, I, I know, had, right mine. <laughs> I had mixed dreams, but I don't remember. I'm not okay, good at then, keeping a, a journal. Agana, were you also gonna keep yours close to the vest? I got it. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. So. <laughs> So the only person that shares their dream is Tweely, <laughs> yeah. which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so for the sake of time, she just regurgitates what I just said to you. It's morning. You've had your long rest. And while you're shaken, um, everything's good. Alora and Dan are just kind of like, they, they know that they also had weird dreams. They just don't remember. So you all were hit by a really weird dream. Mm. All right. So we're up. We're rested. Are we ready to travel? Yeah, I'm ready. Yes, yes. definitely. All right. So everybody's up, and uh, you head to the den of the All Mother. It's actually very close by. It doesn't take you long to get there. Um, as you walk through the forest, um, you notice that the quality of light is changing. Um, instead of the purple cast, um, the light starts to turn kind of green. Um, everything is, is glowing. Um, and it doesn't take long for you to get to the den of the All Mother. see if it'll load there it is okay, okay. Oh, and i think that was last night so remind me again what's the all mother so the all mother oh, I, is i remember sorry now. what okay i remember now we're good then we're good then um let me put everybody in the scene all right so you enter into this sort of uh grove and you see that you're kind of surrounded by ruins. Um, there's, it's, it just seems like a very old place. All right, is that everybody? Okay. And up on this pla stone platform up here, there are hundreds of candles and what looks to be a portal. As you Can enter- Yes. I was just going to say, can I do a nature check to see if I know anything about this particular area? You can do a nature check. Seventeen. So, you've never been here before. Um, you can tell, though, that the forest surrounding you is very old. Um, evergreen trees. It seems very different from the forest that you were just in, which seems strange because it was in the it was it's in the middle of the forest that you've been in for the last day and a half. Okay. So up ahead of you is um, kind of a stone platform with a portal on it. Um, if you all wanted to walk up there, it'd have to be single file. Not everybody would fit. Um, as you enter into the grove, uh, the portal on the platform activates. And you see behind it just swirling shadow. Um, and then walking through it is a very tall being, maybe like 10 feet tall, um, covered in furs and steep sticks and leaves um, with the head of a wolf skull. Um, and giant antlers with beads and talismans hanging off of it. Um, its hands are made of um, long roots that are hooked into claws as it crawls out of the portal and then stands straight up. And it just looks at the group of you and just says, children, why have you sought me out? Um, well, we 
are looking for a cure for Princess Allura's lycanthropy. A cure for lycanthropy. So you wish for me to heal your skin and remove this blessing from your blood? And Allura just says, yes, that's that's why we've traveled all this way. Oh, <laughs> yes, Brian. Yes, Brian. Wait, wait, wait. I don't... Dearest all mother, <laughs> the, I am Mildred Dew Suckle, the originator of the idea of bugs. <laughs> Did you just say you wanted to rip her skin off? No, <laughs> she didn't say that. <laughs> oh, okay. she was gonna heal her skin and uh, remove. I thought I heard peel. I thought I heard peel. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Peel what you... off. Okay, no peel. Yeah, I was just like, you're just a green <laughs> to... girl. Oh, okay, never mind. Never no. mind. Never mind. So, um, she looks at Alora and the rest of you and just says. Are you sure that's really what you want? It's a curse. Says who? Does this man here say it's a curse? And she gestures to Dan, who is also a beastkin. (laughs) There has never been one like you, a fae, with the beast blood. You would be incredibly powerful and an asset to your people. They're one and of then the she... lower peace kings. <laughs> I love that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of like waves her hand and there is kind of a, a picture, like a moving picture with a green shiver around it. And what you see is pretty badass. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a TV. Not, it's, it's, a it's TV. not a It's not a werewolf, but it is like an iridescent, muscular, powerful beetle. Um, So she would be the first of her kind. She wouldn't turn into a wolf. She would, it would access that insect blood that's inherent in in her fairy makeup. Um, And the All Mother says, you would be very strong. You would be an asset. You would be powerful. I search your soul and I see someone who struggles to find meaning meaning in her place in the world. This seems like an incredible gift that you've been given for me to just take it away. So I'm going to offer you a choice. I can heal your skin and you can leave this grove with the power that you brought into it, or I can take it all away and you can return back to the life that you left. And Alora is kind of frozen and she just looks at you guys and she's like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. What would you guys do? Oh, well, well, it's not a werewolf. That that bug was pretty cool. Okay, I I might Keep it. I might be. Well, can we huddle a little bit before we speak to Alora about this? Can we I would just... love to huddle before we speak to Alora about this. <laughs> can we huddle? <laughs> Alora, can right, we just huddle? Alora just looks back. She's like, just, just give me a minute. Do we okay. really want her to be like super powered and like V one? That's. I'm not worried about that. She's very great. I think she would be so fun to do powerful things with. I feel like her dad would kill us if we do not. Oh, yeah. That's... But then she would kill him. That's the vibe I'm getting. Are you guys getting that vibe? I mean, I can't say no, but like. Well, that's that would... going to cause a war. I would say, yeah, turmoil. And I, I wouldn't have nice silks. Can you imagine the strength <laughs> that we would have to potentially set like any problem that we have okay. down and that's my second point is that is she going to be the only one or are you two going to also try to get the werewolf blood because couldn't aren't you both bay yeah so couldn't you try to get whatever she got from dan's obviously not in this huddle right 
Dan's, <laughs> yeah, Dan Dan's there. Up. Dan's present, but he just like doesn't really have. He's just like he's scratching he's there his ears. To offer, if you have any questions, <laughs> he can maybe help you guys. <laughs> I, I I couldn't. I mean, I I'm a Are I'm are fake. you suggesting that she switches the curse to herself? Not her. No, I mean they. If we have three, they it would be like a group of checks and balances. Because if Alora gets too hungry for power, I'm not saying she she is going to, but she might. Okay, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. You really, I've seen it. So this is when this is when Dan chimes in. He's like, "You can't give this to somebody else. That's why this whole thing is freaking weird. Like you're born you're born this way or you're not." Oh. So this is the Can only case of a transferable lycanthropy or curse or blessing? Yeah, like this this has never happened before that I know of and I feel like we would know that, right? And but there but she's right about what she says too. We all turn into wolves. No one's ever been like a strong badass beetle thing. Hmm. Can we get like we're like pop her head up and look at the all mother and go did, would you happen to know how or who would have given her this blessing? My presence is restricted to this grove. I cannot leave. Like the magic doesn't ooze of someone specific or some group of people? No. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> Back to the huddle. Back to the huddle. <laughs> oh, all mother, you. you need not apologize to us. <laughs> Thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know, okay. I'm. I'm no. I'm. I'm. I, I'm also no. But if I'm a yes, because just think of the possibilities. Like the this is an opportunity. That we have about that we have in front of us here. But this is and uh, but is she suggestible? Like that's the thing. Like what's is that's she? That's even worse. That's even worse. <laughs> she could be a tool. Willed. She could be a tool for me. I don't know. <laughs> she could also be a tool for her father. <laughs> This is like a huge track. I just Agata. Agata just said something cool. Oh. What did you say, Agata? You're right. She could become a tool for her father. And the beast can might not survive against something like that. Ah, oh, that's a good point. Dan chimes in at that because he's just like this might be a rare opportunity for the opposite. I mean, the daughter of the High King having beast blood, this could change everything for us. That could unify. That could be a unification. But no one's seen the absolute like issue here is that we don't know how she got this beast blood. And if it wasn't transferable by the werewolves themselves, then who was it a malicious it? thing or was it a benefit like a benevolent thing? Yeah, and then with yeah. the wayfinder, the fucked up wayfinder that sent us to be killed. I mean, there's too many questions to I will also say that if we do this, we have drawn a line in the sand and we have to ensure our safety because he's I mean, knowing the way that he works, he would find a way to kill her and blame us all, and then we'd be like tortured forever. So we have to be very careful if we advise her to keep it, because I'm just saying it's not good. He's he's that scary sometimes. I mean, and, and there's a chance that he could use her instead. But I will I will agree that maybe it could be an interesting chance for peace. I've said my piece. I will go with the majority opinion. Yeah, Dan, Dan's Press gonna say her. his his piece in that, like, I don't know what it is. I just feel like maybe this happened for a reason. And I don't, I don't think a father could, would attack his daughter over 
a choice like this, right? I mean, Denzar is a tyrant, but he's not a monster. You guys weren't there for the the war. <laughs> and both... He was the hero. He saved everybody. Dan? Denzar. <laughs> History is only written by the victors. Agreed. And someone who is of lawful and kind and a good background would not create such a hierarchy and like a caste system and like leave so many people like without a seat in the table. So I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm neutral. I'm neutral. What Ohana, Agana, what do you guys think? Uh, I... If it was me, I would keep it. But I don't know this girl's brain. I don't know if she can stand against her father. And others. I will say... No but... Oh. It could be a great opportunity, considering we are now allies with the dark, to unify the entire fucking world. <laughs> it's a tool for unification, for sure. She has always wanted to do something more with her life, and has felt trapped by the rules and regulations of being a princess. So, this could be her option to be something bigger than you know, the daughter of King Denzar. Hana, were you going to say something? Um, I kind of lost my, my opinion. I think it was, I was going to be for it. I, I think I was against it if it was a werewolf lycanthropy, <laughs> but I, I'm into the bug idea. I, I like, I like Mildred. And she's a mosquito. Um, <laughs> I think I, I think I'm favorable to the bug animal kids. So, yeah. Okay. Well, what does Alora want? I guess is the. So, what what's your advice for her? As a group, I feel like the group consensus was leaning more toward yes. Um. So, what what would you guys like to say to her? Um, I think I have, like, I mean, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> oh, you took it from my mouth! You took it from my mouth! Yes! Like, that's the old adage, right? And so if you've been bestowed this, by either maliciously or benevolently, you have a choice now, Alora, to to create your own pathway. And, you know, for me, I'm, I think being given this blessing as the all-mother claims you could easily forge your own way and create the the world in which you know we can all unify together different clans different different people um and then and you know i'm a little bit biased because i want to be able to like stop the destruction of the forest and i think this power could definitely help with that with that cause or maybe but again it's a risk power is creating destruction of forests hmm? can't trust those werewolves you're the right just like, but it's not strictly like <laughs> 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 what you try we try to say dog i mean you, it, it, it's it's their land right that's that's kind of under kind of desolation at this moment, right? Up in the north? No. <laughs> no? Where's the desolation coming from? Whose land? My is land is under desolation. Oh. So the the deforestation, um, that's actually that is happening in the north. The um, rainforest 
just geography lesson. The rainforest, I need to get, I need to make a map. Why haven't I done this? Okay, so Southwest is where the rainforest is. So it's not your, exactly your domain, um, but it is an emissary, as a representative of all these problems. Um, Dan and the werewolf clan live beyond the deserts in the mountains to the south. South. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Mm. Okay. Just, I'll, I'll make a journal entry and maybe a map. All right, so Alora's gonna take that and she turns to the All Mother and she just says, for my entire life, I've been raised for a duty I don't even understand by a man who's, who has only bred me for a purpose. He's not my father, you know, he's the king and Everything has been decided for me, and for once in my life, I can choose something else. And I think, I think if I were to be able to, to tell him how much value I can finally bring, maybe he would be okay with it, and I can do something else. And so you see this very sheltered young girl facing her destiny, walking up to the All Mother. And she just tells the All Mother, heal my skin, leave the beast blood. Mm. Is and there a way the, that the All Mother could like instruct her on how to properly use this blessing? Could she? Yes. Will she? No. <laughs> <laughs> she just looks to the side like, no. No time for that. So she she reaches out with her hand and just gently with her very scary root hand, uh, gently caresses the princess's cheek and the deep scars start to fade away in, in a shimmer, in a green shimmer until her youthful beauty is restored. And then the All Mother just says, I've given you this great gift. You've come here and asked for my favor. It will not be given again. And then she backs away through her portal and it shuts down. And that's where we'll end tonight's episode. She's gonna get kicked out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> are we all are we all ready to um, you know let her couch uh, couch sir? <laughs> couch sir. She's got a place. She's got a place in my tree. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I have one last thing to do before we end our episode. As you're about to leave the grove, Tweely, mm -hmm. you hear a voice in your head. And it's a message from Cassie. Yay! <laughs> and she just says, Hi, Twilly. I, I learned sending today. It's super advanced. I can say 25 words, and you can say 25 back. You having fun? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Cassie. It's wonderful to hear from you we are having a time <laughs> <laughs> we're learning a lot keep studying <laughs> you have this many more <laughs> I had a dream about you <laughs> okay all right, and then, um, we yeah, have one last thing. You know, we have a little, we have five minutes. Agana, you feel a weight on your hip, and you look down, and there's a sword that was not there a second ago. Uh -huh. You reach down and touch it, and you hear 
the all mother's voice in your head. And she says, child of mine, that my forests have cared for, I have watched you grow. I have watched you struggle. You have many fights ahead. I hope this helps. And you have a, a, a cool looking sword. It's a, it's a bastard sword, so it can be wielded uh, single handed or two hands. And it looks like it has like a curved blade and it has um, vines, gilded vines kind of leaning around it. And it seems very powerful. Um, do you, are you just gonna like leave it on your hip or um, in your inventory or do you want to equip it? Oh, I love new blades. Of course I want to equip it. Okay. The second you do, another voice enters your head. <laughs> and it's dark, it's menacing. And while it doesn't form words, you feel its intention and it thirsts for fey blood. And that's where we'll end our episode. <laughs> 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 Get that right, cool. from me. <laughs> so yeah, we've heard from Cassie. Ghana's got a creepy sword, and Laura is like a were beetle, which is pretty cool. cool. So is she always a were beetle, or does she transform into one? She um just like a beast can can change into the form of an animal, she can take on the beetle form. So is it just her in particular, or, or so are all the fays kind of based off of bugs? So this this beast blood it, it tapped into something already inherent inside of her. Um, the fang kind of come in, yeah, like the fang kind of come in two speeds, kind of like um, Mika and Tweely. They kind of have like big feathery wings, so they're more avian, whereas Allure and the royal family are more insect leaning. Is that why she has butterfly wings? Yes. Cool. Uh, okay. Okay. Yep, and her mom has like pretty moth wings, and her dad has butterfly wings. <clears throat> cool. All right. I just gotta get this in your inventory, Ghana, and then you'll have it for next time. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, thanks for playing as always. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. DMing. Hell yeah. And we'll be playing again. The plan is on the 27th. Let me know if anything comes up. And Brian, do you want to plug some of our other games? Yeah! Um, <laughs> of course, we have our Saturday game. It's going to be the final chapter of the Waterdeep Dragon Heist campaign that's been happening for like a year and a half now. I might cry. So if you want to possibly cry, watch that. Sunday is the Adventure Pass Strength of Thousands. This lady's in it, this lady's in it, and this lady's in it. It's a lot of fun and we're going through, um, we're finishing up the first book of that adventure um, in the next couple of um, weeks. So we'll be on book two. Um, and then the Sunday after that, um, we have Pathfinder Society, which is my own home group campaign. Very messy, very kind of wild, very kind of, you know, but we're having fun, we're having fun. This person, this person's in it, and this person's in it, and then this person's in it, so definitely watch it. And then um, Sam and I, Captain Sham and I, are reading the latest Pathfinder 2nd edition book, um, The Dark Archives, and we'll be having a little one-on-one -on -one about what we've read and just like hyping up and geeking out over it because um, I just wanted to make like more like informative content. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, it will be posted like whenever the book is released so we're not spoiling anything. Um, and I think that's it. So um, I'm gonna do an ad, and then we're gonna um, I'm gonna set up a raid. Um, tell, us, and, tell us more about your pass or smash series. 
Oh yes. yeah, it was a password. We I love it. To get that we love it. it. Smash your pass, <laughs> hell yeah. Really, if you loved it, you would come. You would comment. I don't know. I do. I do. I do. I only see it on. I only see it on TikTok, and I don't know how to use TikTok other than seeing your stuff. <laughs> I've been on Instagram bullied. like fire emojiing to this and yeah, laughing emojiing to this. It gets hot. So definitely it like, does. comment, and subscribe on TikTok. Um, and hopefully I'll be making more content on there. So lazy. Um, thank you for reminding me. Does anyone else have anything they want to plug? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to do an ad and then we're going to be raiding probably Kirk the Orc again. Um, and they're playing Dungeons and Dragons. So, yeah. Well, thank you for watching. Putting on an ad now. Um, and we'll raid. So, bye. 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 one viewer so i'm not gonna rate that's embarrassing <laughs> i had so much fun this was such a fun time mm -hmm. yeah i know I'm, uh, I'm so happy to be a player and sam's so good so yeah all right so i'm not gonna rate so i'm gonna just end the the stream but i'll talk to you soon everybody okay bye bye bye, bye. bye.